The 90s saw an explosion of one-on-one -on -one tournament fighters after the release of the mega-hit Street Fighter II in 1991. Developers scrambled to create their own versions of the emerging genre, hoping to make their own cash cow. Enter SNK, creators and publishers of some of the most revered fighters around. World Heroes had a selecting time-traveling warriors testing their skills against other historical figures from around different time periods. One of the more notable things in this game were the obstacles and trap rooms. Long before DOA was known for their multi-tiered arenas or danger zones, World Heroes had wrestling rings set on fire or replaced them with electric ropes, buzzsaw floors, and even a cage with spikes on both sides. It proved popular enough to get a few sequels and home console ports to the SNES, Genesis, and Game Boy, but not popular enough to escape the 90s where most of the 2D tournament fighters were left by the wayside. So how does an extreme and wacky fighting game transition into an old-school belt scroller? Pretty well, actually. Because this isn't just one fighting game, but a few molded together. This is the quite amusingly titled World Heroes Supreme Justice Extra! Extra. USA! Released in 2013 by Magus and updated in 2018, this is a game utilizing the Open Boar Engine, a beat em up program where you can create and mash together your favorite brawlers into new games. The story is pretty bare bones, with a short cutscene telling us to use the time machine to go all over the world. And that's about it. Really, it doesn't matter why we're beating up people, we have justice to dispense, damn it! Like any good belt scroller, we have a lot of moves at our disposal. There is a button to punch, kick, jump, and block. Every character has a four punch combo and a two kick combo at their disposal. You can also mix and match them, which is really cool. You also have throws. You can attack foes when they're down, which I love. You can run as well as dodge up or down. Doing certain button commands will unleash each fighter's special moves like you would see on their respective tournament fighter and are easy to pull off. It's pretty easy to abuse these moves, and a lot of them gives us a lot of invincibility frames, so we, we won't be taking any damage from nearby enemies. Supreme Justice controls very well, is fast, maneuverable, which is a trademark of most open board games. Hell yeah! World Heroes Supreme Justice has us in control of a number of fighters, most from the World Heroes games, but some like Kisara coming from Aggressors of Dark Combat, another SNK fighter. In fact, a lot of the enemies come from another game entirely, Fighter's History from Daddy East. In any event, all the sprites look bang on and really blend in well in Supreme Justice. Nothing looks out of place like in some other fan-made games, which I really appreciate. This is quite a beefy roster of rapscallions to roughhouse rude rule breakers brawling against waves of generic mooks and cannon fodder, with the obligatory boss fight against one of the other world hero characters, good or bad. The characters all look great too. Aside from the ninjas, which is your standard Ryu and Ken clone fighters, there's lots of diversity. There's a Bruce Lee wannabe, Joan of Arc, Tong Po from Kickboxer, Genghis Khan, a Japanese schoolgirl, and even a Hulk Hogan ripoff. What's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> Another great thing in any SNK game are the vibrant backgrounds. We'll travel through construction sites, a war-torn city, jungle, bamboo forest, sewer, and even a castle. Lots of bright and colorful areas to fight in, and you can even pick from a branching path during stage 5. My only real gripe is that the stages go on for just a bit too long. This is on the longer side, and uh, shorter is definitely better when it comes to beat em ups, at least in my opinion. The sound effects are actually quite good, all the blows sound heavy and thunderous, and there's loads of people yelling and screaming their trademark moves, which is cool. The music is also pretty good, lots of slam dancing tunes as you bash heads in, although nothing too memorable in my opinion, but still very good. We're given three lives and six continues to beat the game, and honestly, you can finish this bad boy without much hassle. I do with a few credits to spare and played it by myself too. 
It also helps that there's lots, and I mean lots, of health pickups by dumpster diving into drums, crates, and sacks for food. Aside from the main arcade mode, we also have a practice mode too. Well, practice. <laughs> and a survival mode and a ring of death of sorts. One side is set on fire and the other is electrified, so pick your poison. You'll be fighting waves of standard foes and other world hero warriors until you drop. Don't move. Overall, I'm really impressed with what Magus did here. There's tons of moves, custom combos, air juggles, special moves. It's very fast and maneuverable. Looks great to boot. The soundtrack may not be very memorable, but it's a total blast to play. If you're looking for an easier belt scroller to play and you have about an hour or so, I highly recommend you try World Heroes Supreme Justice Extra. <laughs> what a title. Let me know down in the comment section below your thoughts on the game. I'm Will, for those about to retro, we salute you. Take care.